Franz Halder's life story is a testament to his unwavering dedication and pivotal role in the German military. In this video, we delve into the fascinating life of Franz Halder, from his early years to his remarkable career in the military. Early Life and Education Franz Halder was born on June 30, 1884, in Würzburg. He was the son of Major General Maximilian Halder and Matilda Halder. In 1902, after completing his education, Franz Halder joined the Bavarian Army, where he began his journey in the world of military service. Rising through the ranks His dedication and skills quickly propelled him through the ranks. Within two years, he was promoted to the rank of second lieutenant. During this time, he attended various war schools and the artillery and engineers school. In 1911, he enrolled in the War Academy, where he prepared for a future in general staff service. World War I When World War I erupted, Franz Halder served as an orderly in the general command of the Third Army Corps, primarily in the Western Theater. In January 1915, he became the second staff officer of the 6th Infantry Division. His exemplary service during the war earned him the Iron Cross, as well as the House Order of Hohenzollern. Post-World War I After the First World War, Franz Halder continued his service in the Reich Sweger. In 1923, he was promoted to the rank of Major. Two years later, he was transferred to the 7th Bavarian Division. In 1929, Halder achieved the rank of Lieutenant Colonel, and two years after that, he became the Chief of Staff of the 6th Division with the rank of Colonel. Advancing in the Wehrmacht Franz Halder's significant encounter with Adolf Hitler during a practice maneuver paved the way for his further advancement in the Wehrmacht. This encounter left a lasting impression on Hitler, and in February 1938, Halder was promoted to the rank of General of the Artillery. In September 1938, when Ludwig Beck stepped down from his position as the Chief of General Staff of the Army, Franz Halder succeeded him. Involvement in a Conspiracy it's important to note that both Ludwig Beck and Franz Halder were part of a conspiracy group against Adolf Hitler. This conspiracy was in response to a potential military response by the Western Allies during the Sudan crisis. However, the Munich Agreement, which granted the Sudetenland to Germany, derailed their plans. Following this agreement, Franz Halder distanced himself from the conspirators. Planning Military Campaigns as Chief of General Staff of the Army, Franz Halder was involved in planning various military campaigns, including the campaigns in Poland, the West, and the Soviet Union. In recognition of his contributions, he was awarded the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross on October 27, 1939. A Bold Move During the winter of 1939, when Adolf Hitler insisted on starting the West campaign despite his general's advice, Franz Halder, together with Walter von Brauchitsch, the supreme commander of the army, prepared to arrest Hitler as soon as he issued the attack order. However, the plan became unnecessary as the West campaign concluded successfully in 1940. A controversial dismissal Franz Halder's career took a turn in 1942 when he openly disagreed with Hitler's decision to split Army Group South into Army Group A and B during the summer offensive against the Soviet Union. This disagreement led to his dismissal in September 1942, and his position was taken over by Kurt Zeitzler. Post-war years After the failed July 20 plot in 1944 against Adolf Hitler, Franz Halder was arrested by the SS, who believed he was involved in the conspiracy. He was subsequently discharged from the Wehrmacht and placed in the Flossenburg concentration camp. Fortunately, he survived the war and became an American prisoner of war, eventually regaining his freedom in the summer of 1945. A Legacy of Testimony Following the Nuremberg War Trials, Franz Halder testified as a witness. After the Second World War, he played a role in spreading the notion of the Clean Wehrmacht. On April 2, 1972, Franz Halder passed away at the age of 87 in Asher and Chimgau, leaving behind a legacy of military service and a remarkable journey through the tumultuous times of 20th century history. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing to our channel.
by subscribing, you'll be notified when we upload new videos. Thank you again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. You can also help to support of my channels at PayPal details in the description box below.